I've always been kind of fascinated with the idea of magnets. Actually, ever since I was really young when I started to take apart some of my early toys and discovering magnets inside of them. And I think even today, magnets to me basically are like magic. They seem to have these really exotic properties and they seem to act in ways that you don't actually expect them to act, especially once the conditions become very extreme. And that's also why I always love talking about magnetars, the most powerful and I guess the most exotic, most extreme and most fascinating magnets in the universe. Magnets so powerful that they tend to produce effects that we don't actually expect or can't even imagine, at least yet. And today we're going to be talking about a new record holder. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively new study that was able to provide direct measurements and direct proof of the strongest magnetic field in the universe. The strongest magnet. Although here I have to clarify, this was the strongest detected so far. Because theoretically, the scientists believe something even stronger can easily exist somewhere out there. But in this case, this was a direct proof of such a field existing in the binary X-ray system known as J0243.6, a system that we believe contains two stars, a much larger donor star and a much smaller neutron star responsible for these very powerful emissions. And in this case, as the neutron star absorbs a lot of this mass, it also tends to produce very specific X-rays which can then be used to measure the magnetic field of the neutron star. And once in a while, as it goes through various outbursts, it becomes possible to measure a lot of things about the neutron star and its environment. Which is precisely what the scientists were able to achieve using a relatively new X-ray telescope that's actually run by the Chinese agency. That's actually known as the InSight HXMT and is the China's first X-ray astronomy satellite, as it says in the title right there. Although I shouldn't have probably mentioned that because every time I make a video and I mention China to some extent, the video instantly gets a lot of dislikes. But that's expected because of our biases. Anyway, moving on, let's discuss the science. So, as you probably know by now, neutron stars and specifically magnetars theoretically represent the most powerful magnets the universe can produce. Even the most powerful black hole out there cannot actually match a typical neutron star. And the theory and the math behind all of this is pretty solid. As a matter of fact, the scientists have various concepts defining how much magnetism a typical neutron star can produce and also how it's actually able to create all these very powerful magnetic effects. So for example, some of the magnetic field is produced because the neutron stars spin so extremely fast. They can actually spin several hundred times every single second. While on top of this, they also have a lot of the plasma circulating around them the plasma that's basically coming from the donor star. This plasma also creates a very powerful magnetic field as well. Altogether, this creates effects that are kind of difficult to imagine because sometimes they actually start to act against the gravity. And very often these effects become so strong that they actually polarize the space itself around the neutron star. Now it's actually sort of difficult to imagine, but the space itself, the empty space around the neutron star, becomes very, very different. It actually starts to produce particles, it also starts to create things that would be otherwise impossible, and even acquires mass from nothing, which then also results in what's known as the dilation effect. So very powerful magnetic fields actually end up creating some really, really exotic effects. And super powerful magnetic fields even start to act in ways that are difficult to describe mathematically. As a matter of fact, the linear representation of the magnetic field that works on planet Earth becomes sort of impossible. There's something known as the Schwinger limit, where essentially the magnetic formula kind of breaks down, and various particles start to act in very strange ways. At these magnetic strings, any particle inside of this field can be easily accelerated to the same speeds as what we usually have inside particle accelerators in just a minute volume, something that's only a few micrometers in size. So basically here things just don't really make sense anymore. And obviously if you were to find yourself in one of these fields, yeah, that would not be very pleasant. Not only would you instantly disintegrate, but all of your matter would then accelerate to ridiculous speeds and would very likely become energy, while slowly being absorbed by the magnetar. Although that's actually a very interesting topic to cover in one of the Halloween videos. Maybe we'll talk about this in the future. But anyway, this limit usually occurs at around 4 billion Tesla, or around 40 trillion Gauss. We're going to be using Gauss in this case because it's a much more common unit used in science. And even the simplest neutron star will normally contain approximately a trillion to possibly 10 trillion Gauss of magnetic energy. 
In other words, the majority of them already almost reached that limit, even if they're not magnetars. But pretty much all of the known magnetars to us, in theory, have a much stronger magnetic field. Possibly even 100 times as strong as the Schwinger limit. Here we're talking about 1000 trillion or a quadrillion Gauss, with the upper theoretical limit being approximately 100 quadrillion. At this point, even for magnetars, the theory starts to kind of break down. Now, there could be more powerful magnetars, but nobody really knows, and the math doesn't really work after that. But all of this is, of course, theory. It's kind of difficult to try to test this or to measure the field, because we obviously don't have any way to, for example, bring a couple of wires there and then try to measure the levels of electricity in order to measure magnetism. And so the only way to measure the magnetic field on various objects out there is to try to observe what's known as the cyclotron absorption lines in various X-ray emissions. Or basically, if you have the X-rays coming from this region and you suddenly find these absorption lines at certain frequencies, it indicates that something interacted with the X-rays and in this case, depending on the frequency, it becomes possible to determine the actual power of interaction. And so that's kind of what the scientists discovered coming from the system. By looking at this particular neutron star binary, the scientists found the absorption line at approximately 146 kilo electron volts, which implies that as the plasma in the accretion disk falls into the magnetic lines, the X-ray radiation that's released creating various jets then has something absorbing it with that very specific power. All of this is believed to be caused by a kind of a resonance wave that's created around the neutron star with the electrons forming certain frequencies. And by using the theory behind this, it becomes possible to then measure the magnetic field that generates these resonant waves created from the electrons. And because in this case this is also known as the ultra-luminous or very bright X-ray pulsar, the luminosity of the X-rays here allows the scientists to see things that would be otherwise impossible. And so it looks like in 2017, during such an outburst, the magnetic field around this pulsar increased to approximately 1.6 billion Tesla, or about 16 trillion Gauss. So approximately one third of that limit I previously mentioned, and much much smaller than what we expect from a magnetar, but more powerful than around a typical neutron star. Which also beats the previous record from another pulsar established in 2020. That pulsar had the strength of about 1 billion Tesla. But these numbers are so huge that it becomes almost impossible to imagine the strength of these fields. And actually visualizing this is almost impossible. But just to give you a comparison to some of the objects around us, well, right now, by being on the surface of planet Earth, you're experiencing approximately half a Gauss. Once again, this is 16 trillion Gauss, so approximately 32 trillion times higher. Here's a rough visualization of what 1 trillion looks like with a million being this tiny, tiny dot right here, but we're talking about 32 trillion, stronger than planet Earth. Now, in comparison, a typical fridge magnet is about 50 Gauss, or about 100 times stronger than the surface of the planet, but we're talking about 32 trillion. A sunspot would have the strength of about 1500 Gauss, whereas the equator of Jupiter has the strength of about 4000 Gauss, 8000 times stronger than the surface of planet Earth, but not 32 trillion with the MRI machines usually having the strength between 3000 to approximately 70,000 Gauss at their strongest, with this neutron star still being 228 million times stronger, roughly, than the strongest MRI machine on the planet, with all this being officially confirmed using the X-ray observations from this particular binary system. In this case, also discovering that neutron stars do seem to have complex structures, magnetic structures, with the actual dipole moments very likely being different from your typical magnet. Or in other words, the magnetic field structure around a neutron star is much more complex and seems to involve various features that we still don't really understand very well. The dipole field in this case is not symmetric like in a traditional magnet, with the magnetic structure resembling something we can't imagine. All this may be due to the fast rotation of the pulsar or possibly due to some other theory we still don't really understand. But all of this means that there are going to be so many new discoveries with all of these new X-ray telescopes in the coming years. The discoveries that we're going to be discussing in some of the future videos. Which means that maybe you should subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Hey look, their website has these funny spinny thingies. That's kind of interesting.